Это куда? Drop that motherfucker! Welcome to Escape from Tarkov. This is a hardcore first person tactical shooter with RPG MMO elements like quests, leveling, trading, and looting. It takes place in a fictional zone that is sealed off by UN and Russian military. When you start the game, you will decide if you want to play as a Yusek or a bear. The only difference between both factions is cosmetic clothing and in-game voice language. You can still group up with other players in the opposite faction. Yusek speak English and bears speak Russian. The main objective is to survive and extract before time runs out. Players can select different maps to raid on. You will spawn at point A and attempt to extract at point B with other possible extractions like C, D, and E. During the match, you will be pitted against AI and other online players. Each map has a specific amount of PMCs that are required for the match to start and a limit to how many can join. PMCs can have 5 players max in a group and player scouts with 4. You will be matched against mixed sizes including solo players. Your personal goals could be to accumulate money, complete quests, level up your PMC total level and skill levels as your main character, level up traders, upgrade your hideouts, and unlock cosmetics. This game is open to a wide audience of playstyles like stealth, surviving, questing, farming and looting, camping, modding weapons, customization, buying and selling goods, crafting and trading, etc. As for main menu tabs, Escape from Tarkov is where you will match. You have the option to play as a PMC, your main faction character, or a scav, a randomized character loadout that can spawn into a raid. Each time you play as a scav, you're increasing your total scav level, skills, and stats separate from your PMC. You can equip items from your stash to your PMC and use them in your raid. I have categorized the maps to my opinion of the difficulty level. For the easiest, we have shoreline. For medium, we have woods, customs, and factory. For hard, interchange and reserve. And for insane, the labs. The labs requires an expensive one-time use keycard to enter that can be found or bought. When selecting a map, you have the option to select from two time phases, typically day or night. You can also see what the weather conditions are before joining. When you click next, you will have the option to view a map. I'll talk about this shortly. Click next. Here, you can click the next again to play online, or you can check the offline mode. This will allow you to play against AI in your own match and not lose gear. You cannot play with other players currently in an offline match. After you hit next, you will see an insurance screen. Insurance. You can insure your items by paying money to our particular trader. Propor is the default selected trader and will charge you the least amount of money but will take the longest to get your item back. If a player doesn't extract with your insured item when the match ends, you will receive a message if the item is being looked for or gone. Eventually, the item will appear for you to receive. You have two days to retrieve the item once claiming is available. Hit next and you'll see the lobby. Your added friends will appear at the top of the lobby. The only other players you will see are those looking for a group. Be mindful of who is inviting you. Some will invite and start immediately to kill you and take your loot. There are different types of AI in the game. Scavs are AI in the match but can be played by players as player scavs. They can join randomly throughout any raid. When you loot scavs, you can tell if they are a player by looking for a pouch. Not only can you tell sometimes by movement, but they are for sure a player right off the bat if you see a gun on their back because scavs don't carry two primary weapons. Raiders speak English and wear USEG gear. They are tougher AI and appear on labs as well as observe. Several maps have a boss that can spawn who are guarded by minions. They are difficult AI with great loot, especially the boss. Loot them if you can. 
Back to the main menu, character tab, overall stats, gear equipped. Let's talk about stash and inventory management. The left is gear, to the right is your stash. Everything you loot is stored here. If you are holding an item by left click, you can hit R to rotate the item. You can upgrade your stash by leveling your stash size and hideouts which I'll go over shortly. You can also buy and craft different cases that will hold more items in actual size. This will make more cells available in your stash. Right click will give you the different options like install, fold, discard, etc. Middle mouse button will fold a stock. You can also stack backpacks at the moment, but this could change in the future. Removing most magazines and handles will help increase your stash size. You can even attach two cell scopes and convert them into one cell by attaching them to mounts. You can attach it to a weapon in your stash as well. Modding. You can interchange parts by inspecting the weapon and dragging and dropping. You can also right click to install it to an available weapon. You can also drag an attachment to a weapon if the rectangle is green, letting go will install it. If red, it won't work because something is preventing it from doing so. You can inspect the weapon and try to interchange parts. Having a workbench, which you can also obtain in hideouts, will allow you to preview the weapon, select attachments with the drop down arrow, and select a part that is available in your stash, not inside rigs or cases. I will go over presets shortly. Presets are another great feature for customizing your weapons. For your character loadout, we have armor. Some armor will not completely cover the chest, and some will cover additional limbs like arms, stomach, waist, neck, face, etc. All armor has a tier level. Currently, there is tier 1 to 6, 6 being the strongest tier. Players can wear 1 torso armor and 1 helmet. Torso armor and rig armor cannot be combined. Heavier armor is stronger, but tends to limit movement speed, turning speed, and ergonomics. Helmets will have a ricochet chance of low, medium to high. High is the best for the chance of completely ricocheting rounds instead of absorbing like lower medium. If a shot at your helmet, you will experience loss in vision and hearing temporarily. Some helmets allow you to wear them with headsets which I'll go over later. Others can suppress your overall hearing, putting you at a disadvantage when listening for sounds by other players. Your visibility can be limited by face shields. Right click or press N to close or open your face shield. This is helpful when trying to aim at players from afar or pushing close quarters. Extra armor on the jawline or neck help keep you alive. Some helmets also allow mounts to be installed for night vision or thermal vision. N is the same key again to be pressed. Face shields and vision goggles can't be worn together. You can use night vision or thermal scopes on your weapon if wearing a heavy head protection. You can repair armor and face shields by right clicking and selecting repair. Once repaired, you will lose partial durability overall. You can spend extra coin for less durability loss. Special pouch containers, your secured container. Different types of containers can be obtained. In this slot, you won't lose anything inside on death. You cannot add weapons or armor to this container. Items allowed are junk, meds, ammo, etc. This could change in the future. The hotkey bar. Your first slot is your melee weapon. The shortcut is V. Double click V to quick draw melee and switch back to a weapon. When wielding your melee weapon, left click is to chop, right click is to stab. All melee weapons do slightly more damage by right clicking to stab. You will not lose your melee weapon equipped on death. Number 1 is your sidearm, 2 is your primary slot, and 3 is your secondary. You can hotkey grenades, or even medications. That way, instead of digging through your inventory, you can use them in the match by hitting the number key. When reloading a mag, you must leave an available spot in your pocket or rig for the mag you're changing to be returned. If not, the mag will drop to the floor. Hold R and scroll the mouse wheel to select the mag you want to reload. If you want to reload slightly faster, double tap R. This will drop the mag to the floor. To check the mag and ammo type next in your magazine, press left alt and T. If you have a grenade equipped in your pocket or rig, all you have to do is hit G to throw the grenade. From your inventory, grenades will be used from pockets first, left to right, then your rig from top to bottom, then left to right. This also applies to magazines when reloading, but the magazine with the most ammo will be selected first. For special grenade throws, assign one to your hotkey bar. To roll a grenade, simply select it via hotkey bar to place it into your hands and right click to prep a nade for a roll. Click right click again to roll the grenade. Left click throw won't work if prepped with the right click to hold. If you try to sprint while throwing a grenade on release, it will go in an odd direction. You can prep a nade and hold it as long as you want while sprinting, you can stop, and then click it again to throw it or roll it. I've seen people get headshotted by shrapnel from far grenade distances. Grenades cause fragmentation and shrapnel can kill from a range. There are different types of grenades with fuse times as well. Health. 
Total hit points in each body part. If a body part is blacked out, you will take damage to the rest of your limbs if the zeroed body part is shot at. You can view hydration and energy here. During matches, you will have to keep hydration and energy up. Temperature, infections, radiation, and pressure are not in the game yet. 0.7 times damage is distributed from the arms, 1 times damage from the legs, and 1.5 damage at a zeroed stomach. You will not die instantly if bled into 0 HP on head or thorax, but you will die instantly if hit after. Players will have to deal with health problems like bleeding, fractures, pain, contusion, tremors, and more. I will post a link below with all the health indicators that are important to know during the raid. Bandages will plug bullet holes. Right click to use or drag and drop to body part to use. AI2 will only heal hit points, also known as cheese. Car packs, IFAX, Sailwas, and Grizzlies will heal HP and plug holes. If a body part has completely lost blood, you can use a surgical kit to bring it back at reduced total hit points. You will die instantly if thorax or head is blacked out. If you need to fix a fracture, use a splint. If legs or arms are zeroed or you're in pain, you can use painkillers to relieve the pain and make less noise. Painkillers will visually over sharpen the image on your screen. This will also allow you to walk at normal speeds if your legs are zeroed. Sprinting on zeroed or broken legs will damage you completely and can eventually kill you. If you are dehydrated, you will slowly lose HP to all body parts. After 5 minutes, you will die, even after healing until you find liquids. I believe the same thing happens when you run out of energy. If stacked, you will lose health quicker. Also, you can heal while on the move. You cannot move while using a surgical kit. If your stomach is zeroed out, you will dehydrate faster. Players will also have to off-raid heal, hydrate, and eat after raids. Make sure to purchase your needs before heading into the next match. Skills. Passive skills that are leveled by playing. Highlight each skill to read the benefits. Map. You can use maps online, but if you bought a map in-game and had it equipped, you could refer to this tab during the match to help you extract. Tasks. Quests that are accepted by traders. They give reputation, item unlocks, and experience. The quest item stash. Move quest items from in-game inventory to special off-raid quest stash. This only applies to special quest items found in the game that can't be used or traded for on the flea market. Some quests require you to extract with an item and bring it to another map. That's where this option would apply if you didn't want to lose the item by playing on a different map, because the quest may require you to stay alive holding the item or else you will have to obtain it again. The items that apply to the stash are only found once the quest is activated. Trading. Dealers. Buy and sell different items here. Some items can be purchased with currency or the traders will require a trade for certain items. Items from traders may have a limit before more items are available. Buying and selling will help increase next loyalty tier level requirements. Increasing loyalty level will provide more items to buy. Completing tasks will increase reputation and give you a lot of XP. Propor has weapons, attachments, and ammo. Sell your weapons, attachments, and ammo here. Therapist. She has meds, food, and liquids, cases, maps, and keys. Sell your junk, items, food, and liquids, and meds here. Fence. This is the junk trader. Things you can't sell to anyone due to loss in durability, for an example. Skier has attachments, guns, ammo. Sell your attachments, armor, and clothing. Trade rubles for euros here. Peacekeeper. US light gear. Anything you sell here, you will get American dollars in return. The mechanic. The mechanic has fancy weapons and attachments. Sell your weapons, attachments, and ammo. Trade your bitcoins or GP here for decked out weapons. Ragman. Ragman has clothing, armor, and cosmetics. Sell your clothing and armor here. Jaeger. He is the newest trader with mixed gear. He's introduced during your quest lines. Accept your tasks under the task tab under each trader. More tasks will be available once you complete certain tasks and reach certain levels. The flea market. Players can buy and sell items to one another at different prices. This can help with retrieving quest items that aren't required to be found in raid. This also helps with weapons, armor, and ammo you can't buy from traders yet. Searching for an item is finicky at the moment. Don't forget to clear your X's and type the actual name of the item when inspecting it. If you want to link an item to the flea market, right click it and click link to search. Link to search is a great way to find out what attachments will work with a weapon for instance. Make sure to select the drop down arrows for the parts to appear. Right now I am adding an offer to sell my P90 attachment we bought earlier. Your offers will take a minute to list. You will receive a message with money to redeem when your offer is bought. The auction hells, not in the game yet. Pay close attention to trade offers. Hideout, this is your home base to upgrade that will help with crafting items, off-raid healing, increasing stash size, reducing cool time of scab use, building a firing range, etc. 
Just remember you need a generator active with fuel to craft things. Fuels can be found in raid or on the flea market. You can have multiple gas cans running but they will be drained by can, even when not crafting. You need to have your generator on to craft, not to upgrade stations. I am crafting wires at the moment from power cords. I tried to put my gas cans away but noticed my stash was full so I moved the fuel cans to my lucky scab junk box. Another type of case but this one holds junk items and can be bought from therapists or the flea market. Press the escape key to revert back to the bird's eye view. On the bottom right menu we have presets. This unlocks at level 11. These are your save loadouts and will tell you what attachments work with what gun. You can select a stock loadout, new preset, then use the modding screen to see what attachments are available to this weapon. You can get the same screen with the workbench and that will link directly to your stash, so if you have a piece available, you can click the drop down and install it, instead of trying to do it manually by inspecting a weapon. For handbook, this is all the details of your findings. Messenger, message, add friends, look up player levels. Movement. To crouch, press C. X is to go prone. To adjust your crouch level, hold C and scroll your mouse wheel. To lean, hit Q or E. To step to the side out of cover, hold left alt, then Q or E. To slow lean, hold left alt, then click A or D as needed to slowly adjust angle peaking. You can adjust your movement speed by scrolling the mouse wheel, or to walk to the lowest speed, hit caps locks. Click again will change back to last speed. Blind fire over cover. Hold Alt plus W to raise your weapon. To right side blind fire, hold Alt and S. For head and camera look, pressing the mouse wheel down will allow you to turn your head. This is useful for quickly running to a spot while checking for enemies in a different direction for the few seconds you are exposed. Stamina. Run faster with a handgun or a melee weapon equipped. Hold your breath with left alt. Weapons with higher weight will drain stamina faster while aiming. Going prone will help with stamina control and recoil. To adjust sight meters, use page up or down. Just remember to always keep your stamina green. That way in case things go south, you have some wiggle room to sprint to a short distance. If you're in the red, you can't trigger a sprint. Scroll options when interacting. When you interact with items, you may have multiple options to perform an action. For instance, when interacting with doors, you can open the door, breach it, or unlock it. Breaching clear is not available yet. When looking at lootable items, you can use the mouse again to search, examine, and or equip. Attachments and combat keys. To toggle on and off your attachment, press T. To cycle between active lasers and flashlights, click left control and T. To change the reticle sight while aiming, hold left alt and right mouse click. To change to a different scope installed, left control and right mouse click. To change the fire rate, press B. To check fire rate without making the clicking noise, press left alt and B. To check the chamber, left shift and T. To fold the stock, left alt and L. Loading magazines. Filling a magazine will load the ammo to the bottom of the mag. The last bullet you load will be the first to shoot out of your weapon. Experiment by loading tracers every 5 rounds, or if you're on a budget for armor piercing, let your first half be armor piercing. That way you can tear down armor before getting to flesh. When loading ammo in raid, you will load each bullet one by one. Out of raid, the ammo will fill the magazine instantly. Split ammo. While holding left click to drag, press and hold left control, and let go with left mouse click to bring up a window to split the stack. One trick with magazines, if you move an unknown magazine quantity in your inventory to a new slot, you can tell if the magazine is full instantly if it reads for an example, 30 out of 30 after. Anything below max ammo will remain as an unknown quantity. I'm not sure if the devs designed it this way, but it makes sense if you were to actually move a magazine. You could probably tell in real life if it was near full due to weight. Sound. 
Players can use in-game headsets to enhance hearing. This will help to hear shots and players approaching from farther distances. Currently, I don't know of any stats for headsets, but each headset sounds differently. They can amplify low-level sounds, dampen noises, and somewhat help in weather conditions. Players make noises when looting, toggling attachments, aiming down sights, loading magazines, going from crouch to prone or vice versa, in pain, you name it. The only time noise isn't heard by other players is when you move an item in your bag or using hand commands. Opening your bag will make a distinct noise that can be heard. Sometimes, even the slightest sound like aiming down sights will be picked up by another player who is nearby, so if you're 100% stealthing, don't ADS until ready to fire up close. Even at the lowest movement speed and height, you can still be heard by another player in proximity who is wearing contacts. It's very hard to stealth in this game against someone who is wearing headsets, so try to stealth from a distance so their headsets can't pick up your movement. If you turn quickly while crouched, your player will make a shuffling noise. You can also be heard shuffling through bushes. Crouch walk extremely slow through bushes and keep your mouth steady and fluid while turning slowly. If sound causes you to play too cautiously, wearing a helmet that suppresses your hearing may help you play more aggressively. Eventually you will learn the map so well that you can pinpoint player movement by listening for areas that have glass, bricks, wooden floors, metal frames, etc. This will help give you a general idea of where someone is located. Long range suppressors. If you're getting hit by rounds but cannot hear the shots, someone is shooting you with a suppressor from afar. They are not in your vicinity for the shots to be heard. To open hand signals and voice commands, double tap Y. To assign voice commands to F1 to F12, right click the voice line and select the key. Drop that motherfucker! Hmm. F1 is also right mumble by default. This y is also down. used for voice lines like when hurt uh, hit. or looking at a player to cooperate. Hey, wanna cooperate? Hey, down for a party? As a scav, you can make AI scavs follow you by using the follow gesture. This is great for bringing AI to enemy players. If you attack a scav in a group, other scavs will attack you from the same group. Some exits may require a PMC and a scav to extract. Extractions. Pressing O will tell you the time left in a match, but double tapping will list all your extractions. Some extractions may require other means of escaping, like paying a driver for a ride or taking off your bag to fit. Extracts with question marks are hidden until found, and have a chance of working. They typically have a sign of use with a green flare or a light. Other exits require certain keys or power to energize them. Tips during matches. Spawn locations. It is good to know where PMC players spawn. This could help you expect a gunfight from a certain direction as soon as the match starts. Proceed to exits with caution. I've seen players waiting until the last minute for a juicy haul after all your hard work. I've done it myself. It works but requires a lot of patience. Bring food and hydration if you're going to exit camp. Hatchlings and looters will generally be the first to loot good spawns. They usually run solo with barely any gear. Hatchings are a term for someone who carries only a melee weapon to loot. Learn map callouts as you play. Team killing is very common, so players must constantly use communication when playing as a team. You can purchase colored armbands from Ragman to differentiate your group from your enemies. Players who are solely looking for PvP will be attracted to explosions and gunfire, and tend to hang around hot areas. Hot areas tend to be where most PvP takes place. This usually involves choke points for crossing players, scav boss spawns, or good loot spawns. Anytime you loot a player out in the open, you should always stuff your face into their body and search. Loot quickly, examine later in safety. You should always loot attachments for good money. Try to loot AI scab pockets and bags as well. They usually carry good random items. If you find a bunch of looted bodies after a gunfight, look around for gear that was hidden. If the bodies are not looted, do not loot. Back up and scan the area. Someone could be using the unlooted bodies as bait. Collect food and liquids for easy money. They're worth more than you think now. Sell these items in the flea market or hold on to them. If you need a place to store food, purchase a thermo bag. The best budget weapons to take down heavy targets. Cheap weapons like the Mosin with SMB ammo, the Vepper Hunter with M61 and 10 rounder mags, and a 762 weapon like an SKS or an AKM with BP ammo. Buy a cheap weapon but invest in high armor piercing ammo. Keep a mag reload ready in a pocket or a rig and keep the rest of the ammo in your secure container. Future updates may not allow ammo in a secure container, so in other words, travel with minimal armor piercing rounds since they are very expensive. A single headshot with high armor piercing can take down the juiciest players you'll come across who are running high tier armor. High damage flesh rounds are best for character wipes when players start fresh in the game after major updates. High damage flesh rounds generally tend to be better also on backup weapons like a handgun or SMG to deal with AI or player scabs. Ammo and meta is constantly changing, but trust me, you want the strongest armor piercing ammo in this game as your primary weapon. Tier 5-6 armor piercing is what you want the most. 
Tier 4 is good, which is where the Val is. The P90 and the 5.7 sit right below Tier 4 and will depend on multiple hits with fast fire rate to eventually punch through heavier armor. The same goes for the Val Tier 5 and up. This still makes the Val incredibly strong since most face shields that players run are around Tier 3 to 4. Any armor piercing below Tier 3 is very weak against Tier 4 to 6 armor and will require many rounds to pierce. If you're using high flesh ammo, do not go for armor. Shoot flesh. Shotguns are very strong against flesh. Go for flesh exposed limbs like arms or legs. If a player is wearing a helmet, you should still go for face shots if they are not wearing a face shield. For further information about ballistics, I will post a link down below. Ammo and armor is constantly changing, so what I mentioned may change. Don't forget that you can shoot through cover, especially thin wood, drywall, thin metal, crates, etc. You have to figure out on your own what you can pierce on each map. Damage is reduced shooting through cover. One good tactic is the grenade fuse push. Enter a room after an M67 grenade throw that has a 5 second fuse time. Destroy the target and leave quickly before detonation because enemies tend to run from grenades. F1 and RGD5 have 3 second detonation time so M67 is a much better choice with this tactic. Flashbangs are very strong and can disorient a player for quite some time. They are quick on the throws and explode quickly. Looking away from a flashbang will help resist disorientation. Use a painkiller drug to juice up before fights in case you break your legs in the heat. There's different types of stimulants that provide temporary stats and regeneration at the cost of penalties. Many of them are found on labs. For instance, the combat stimulant increases max stamina and recovery at the cost of hand tremors and tunnel effect. The regenerative stimulant increases health regeneration but reduces the overall health skill. Thermal scopes are great for finding targets in dark areas or vegetation. They are expensive but give you an edge for getting visual contact. What's expected for the future of Tarkov? Wipes on updates. Devs may eventually keep wiping the game in seasons to keep the game fresh. Wipes are the best time to play anyways and keep the games balanced, especially for newcomers. I've also heard about in-game VoIP, there will be a proximity chat in the future. Soon, players will be able to use underbarrel grenade launchers and landmines. I've also heard about an arena mode being added, it's basically deathmatch arcade mode where you don't lose anything. A new enemy faction I've heard about is called the Cultists. They are basically sacrificial crazy people with knives. In the future we will see more maps, weapons, and scab bosses. For map extractions, loot spawns, and other details, I highly recommend searching online for guides to help you. The Escape from Tarkov Gamepedia website is handy for completing quests like mechanic quest requirements for building weapons and finding further information about the game. Those with green names are experienced players a part of the Sherpa program. They solely help new players learn the game. You can apply or ask for help. I'll post the links down below. Anyways, that's it guys. I hope this guide helps you become a better player in Escape from Tarkov. If I miss anything or you also have suggestions, please comment down below. Like and subscribe if this video helped you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.